For this last video, we will be looking at the circumstances under which Astor's enterprise thrived, specifically the capitalist economy of the late 18th and early 19th centuries. We will, be conclude, or we will conclude by examining both America's view on capitalism in modern times and a widely held perspective on Astor's legacy. Capitalism was the prevalent system in the American economy during the time Astor was growing his fortune, and it held many virtues for seedling businesses. It was at the heart of the American dream and produced many success stories. At the same time, the Industrial Revolution, which began to blossom around that time, caused all sorts of hardships for working-class citizens. Trades were no longer picky in who they hired to do their work, as their jobs for the most part did not require specific or hard-to-attain skill sets. With the workers thus being expendable, they had no job security. In addition, with the ultimate goal of capitalist trades being the attainment of the greatest possible profit, Conditions for the workers were not beneficial to, or most of the time even safe for them. But we all know that capitalism has faults, and we even touched on them when we are learning about the early unions and the industrial workers of the world. So to shift the focus, we will look at a few of the reasons besides capitalism that Astor's progression was such a triumph. They were the demand for the quantities he offered, his ability to adapt, and his ability to take calculated risks. Capitalism is market-driven, and at that time, there was a large market for furs. Furs were used for many articles of clothing, and they remained a widely utilized commodity for many years. When asked to join the real estate business, he bought property where he thought there would be growth, and therefore demand. When he began smuggling opium, he traded with China, where there was a prohibition of opium that lasted until 1860. He traded with them because there was a high demand. Astor had success also because he was able to adapt to the market changes in an almost Darwinian manner. When the fur business began to crawl in the 1830s, he slowly began to pull out and make the switch to real estate. With his astute perception of where the next population growth would take place, he bought property accordingly. Astor's ability to take risks was also advantageous to him, and can be seen in two instances. The first was when he established the Pacific Fur Company. The company had very good chances of success, but failed, f sorry, but failed due to uncontrollable variables. Even with the failure, Astor's enterprise didn't suffer too large of a blow, as he had only invested the money necessary and had plenty to fall back on. The second insta instance was seen when he speculated real estate in Manhattan. He foresaw population growth and invested accordingly. He had a similar had a similar disaster as the one with the Pacific Fur Company occurred, he still would have been financially secured by his holdings in other markets. While Astor's personal characteristics served him well, we also know that the unregulated capitalism of his time supported him also. This ec economic system resulted in a major class division that wasn't righted until the regulations and a basis for operation were finally established by the toil of workers and unions. By taking that into account, how do people feel about capitalism as it is now, and how do they feel about it as it was in Astor's time? An example of the view that opposes capitalism can be given from a speech President Barack Obama gave on July 13th of 2012 while he was campaigning for his second term. If you've been successful, you, don't, you didn't get there on your own. You, you didn't get there on your own. I, I'm always struck by people who think, well, it must be because I was just so smart. There are a lot of smart people out there. It must be because I worked harder than everybody else. Let me tell you something. There are a whole bunch of hardworking people out there. If you were successful, somebody along the line gave you some help. There was a great teacher somewhere in your life. Somebody helped to create this unbelievable American system that we had that allowed you to thrive. Somebody invested in roads and bridges. If you got a business, that you didn't build that. Somebody else made that happen. The internet didn't get invented on its own. Government research created the internet so then all the companies could make money off the internet. The point is, is that when we succeed, we succeed because of our individual initiative, but also because we do things together. 
The response to this declaration was mixed. Some people agreed and others did not. The supportive view of capitalism as it is today can be seen from a conserv- for, sorry, from conservative radio and television commentators, most Republican politicians, and other right-wing groups or citizens. A quote from John Mackey, the CEO of Whole Foods Market, typifies the common view from that side. Quote, I learned that voluntary exchange for mutual benefit has actually led to an unprecedented prosperity for humanity. I learned that with free enterprise, when combined with property rights, innovation, the rule of law, and con- constitutionally limited democratic government results in societies that maximize social prosperity and establish the conditions that promote human happiness and well-being, action not just for the rich but for the larger society, including the poor. I had become a business person and a capitalist, and I had discovered that business and capitalism, though not perfect, were both fundamentally good and ethical." Unquote. So while the view of capitalism and whether or not it's the best system to operate under is disputed, the fact that, that its first use in the early United States was poorly conducted is not. To, hen- or sorry, to end, here's a quote from an article in American History Magazine that sums up one widely shared modern-day view of Astor and his fellow robber barons. Quote, In his later years, Astor tried to pass himself off as a liberal humanitarian, but the pose was too unnatural and it never became credible. To the end, money was his passion, and to make it, his men evicted widows and debauched Indians, Though some writers, notably in the late 19th century, have regarded him as a great American hero, history has not accepted the verdict. Today, in a more complex era, Americans ask more of their heroes than the ability to make money. Unquote.